Matt here with Mobile Solar Consulting. Today we are fixing up some issues that this professional van builder left behind. I'm not going to be naming them. The work isn't that bad. We've seen worse, but there's definitely some issues. This van has already been troubleshooted and we have a list of suggested repairs from another highly recommended technician that we're just going to be going through and following. This customer is headed back to Washington and as you know, we are in Stewart, Florida, so they could not be farther from home and they only have today. They need to be home by Monday and right now it's Friday, so we do not have long to work on this. I woke up with the flu and one of my guys is also out sick, so this is the best that we can do. We've got this long list of stuff to work through and we're gonna get as far as we can before I start passing out. As we dig into this, we may uncover more, but here's what we're gonna start fixing. First off, this is a smart BMS 12-200. So this has an alternator charging connection. It's similar to a DC-DC charger, uh, but not quite the same. It's, it's somewhere between a DC-DC charger and a battery combiner. So we're gonna land our alternator wires on the top of the BMS here, and the the gauge that they had used was acceptable, but the wire was run without any mesh loom, so it was unprotected, and the positive wire was chafing up against some sharp metal corners underneath the vehicle. So we're gonna run new wiring, uh, a positive from the BMS and a negative from the Lynx distributor, all the way under the vehicle with plastic loom and well secured to the underside of the vehicle all the way to the starter battery. The next thing you'll notice is there's several connections in here that are not well made. Number one, we've got some connections here that were soldered instead of crimped, and as well on the Lynx distributor. Now, I'm not saying you can't solder connections. I'm not saying I'm a soldering expert either, but I have done my fair share of soldering in science labs, not in vehicles. It's not something we do often. Number one, because it takes a long time. But number two, if you really know what you're doing with soldering, you can make arguably a better connection than a crimped connection. But soldering, there's a lot of ways you can do it wrong. It's easy to find solder and a lug that just don't really adhere well to each other. Maybe you have some older or junky flux that doesn't really help the solder flow into where it should flow. Uh, maybe you're just not experienced with soldering. There's a million ways that you can do it wrong. But crimping is very easy, and it's easy to test that your connections have been made properly by just tugging on them. Here, if I tug on this wire, you can actually see it start to get farther away from the lug, exposing more. The next thing you may notice is that this BMS does not have a way of communicating with the loads and the chargers in the system. So for example, the MultiPlus and the Smart Solar Controller are just connected straight to the Lynx distributor. There's no charge or load disconnect wire between the two. There's no communications wiring going on in here. It's, uh, it's obviously missing the signals that it needs to turn on and off because these are the Victron Smart Lithium batteries so they do not have an internal BMS. So this BMS here needs to either be wired with a physical cable or a communications cable to all the individual devices. And there's really none of that going on here. The tech left a long list of other issues that we could dive further into, but given that we only have six hours with this vehicle, we probably won't get through it all. We'll give you a recap at the end of the day and let you know how it went. Since we're gonna be covering the wire with split loom, we're gonna to have to enlarge the hole in the floor that it went through in order to make it fit. So I'm gonna drill down from the top with a large drill bit, and then I'm gonna drill up from the bottom with a step drill bit to smooth out that exit hole, but also to make sure that the hole in the metal is larger than the hole in the wood in the floor so that the floor kind of keeps the wire from being able to chafe against the metal. Now we'll just spray a bit of primer on that cut metal and we'll be good to slip the wire through. All right, we've got our positive and negative wire up into the front area. We're now stripping and then crimping them. And once we get them landed on the starter battery, we'll be able to tidy up the wiring in here and start pulling out the slack and running the rest of the wire underneath the vehicle. This auto crimper is a lifesaver for working in tight spaces. We got it on Amazon and I'll link it in the description.
All right, so it's the end of the day. We definitely didn't fix everything, but we got a lot done. So we started out running a new wire from the starter battery directly to here with loom on it the whole way and a breaker in between here and the starter battery. We also ran a negative that's now attached to the Lynx distributor and then the other end goes to the starter battery negative. Then we cleaned up some of the imperfect soldered connections, gave a little tug test to the rest of them. Ultimately, um, they're gonna have to perform a load test, meaning just turning everything on full blast and checking for any hot points. And they're gonna have to do that at a later time because we couldn't get to everything today. But we did install a smart battery protect. So that will turn off the DC loads anytime the CL smart, excuse me, the smart BMS 12-200 says, okay, batteries are empty. Everything should turn off. Now the DC loads will actually turn off. Now what we did not yet get to was fixing the inverter. So I mentioned that the MultiPlus did not have any signal coming from this BMS and it still does not. Unfortunately, we didn't get to that today, but the way to fix that will be to use a inverting remote on off cable with the MultiPlus into the BMS. And there's a little bit of programming in the assistance tab of the eConfig that allows the inverter to take those signals into its temperature sensor or aux inputs and you know realize when it should shut down and when it should go into charger only mode. Hope you learned something from this video. If you wanna see us fixing up some other common mistakes, you can watch the next video here.